Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. This is a catch up one, like you know what we've been getting up to at the end of summer. First of all, we had a birthday in the family. Come here darling. It's Tinkerbell's 18th birthday today. So Rain bought her some senior smooth pate with chicken. It's for your birthday. We've got to spoon feed it to her a tiny bit at a time, otherwise she's sick. <laughs> Oh, uh, they're all coming on in. Oh dear. Oh. Now Merlin's trying to get at it as well. She's got it. Yeah, so 18 years ago we came rushing back from Cornwall because we knew she was due to be born. We had her mother, Lena, and there was a litter of four. And we kept Tinkerbell and there was also Tigger. And she has more or less sort of become Rain's cat because they have just taken to each other, you know. <laughs> so she spends a lot of her time in Rain's room except when she's at work and then she just sort of mainly lounges on the windowsill. She's as blind as a bat, bless her. I think she can see a little bit of light out of the window and I sometimes you can get the feeling she can see a little bit but other times she just seems completely blind and she walks into things but but she does alright, she does alright. So Rain has just put this together, this is her present for Tinkerbell and she's just got in it and <laughs> tail sticking out. Rafiki's a bit miffed because it's not for him. <laughs> You're a bit miffed aren't you Rafiki? It's just got to come in and just see her, her <laughs> little tail just sticking out. <laughs> but the season is changing isn't it? Uh, I'm not really ready. At least I feel like we did have a summer. I mean, it was so, so hot and so, so dry for so long. I mean, it was just lovely. I'd never remember a summer where we left the, the cushions out, outside for so many days in a row without worrying about them getting wet in the rain. I just don't remember that. It was just bizarre. And then there was that one day when the rain just came in for the first time in ages. It's coming. Listen to that thunder. <laughs> I can feel it. Oh my god, the size of these raindrops. <laughs> they are huge. And the grass is coming back, it's already turning green, it's quite different from when I filmed those clips. Yeah, that was a couple of weeks ago and yeah, the landscape's going green again, which is lovely. But also, at the same time as the grass is growing green, the leaves are turning brown and falling off and there's the rustle of dead brown leaves everywhere you go, which is just weird, it's too early, but of course the dry summer has led to that so and of course it's time to start harvesting the plums we had this year were amazing i've never i'm i don't think we've ever had that many even the original old plum tree which goodness knows how long that plum tree has been there for when you look at the old maps the old like 1800s maps there is one tree at the end of our garden that is exactly where the plum tree is almost makes me wonder but I don't I've got I don't think fruit trees last that long do they but it it looks really old and gnarly and every winter another branch falls down so it's not going to last much longer I don't think but the plums that just fall are shooting up all over the place so we've got loads of young plum trees and this year they all started well they've sort of started in the past here a little bit but this year we had quite a few plums off the young plum trees as well so I think that helped and also those ones I can reach there were so many I couldn't reach which was a real shame I have never seen so many plums look and look at all of those up there that I can't even reach hundreds and hundreds of them so yeah a good plum harvest this year
and work has been continuing on our garage um, we're doing a, a lot of things are in the works with the house but um, Chris really wants to get the garage finished before the end of summer well work on the garage is continuing Chris is making the next load of shelves We've still got some bits here to clear up and come back in. And um, I just thought I'd do a quick pan of the garage at the state that it's in right now. These chairs are off to the dump, sadly. <laughs> we had those right back. That was our first bits of furniture from Ikea when we first got our house. And that was when Ikea was very new. And yeah, that's the rest of the stuff to sort. And that there. Something to show on camera before I throw it away. This is a postcard from a little village called Yalikovac, which is where I stayed on holiday in Turkey when I was 12 or 13-ish with the family. That was, a, that was a good holiday. Didn't write anything on the back, just kept that. We have a bottle of antifreeze <laughs> entirely supported by a strand of ivy that's grown through. <laughs> We've still got a couple of jobs to do and there's still just a mess just outside of the garage and a little bit of sorting here and there to do i know there's a few more things chris wants me to get rid of but i'm not keen on doing any more getting rid of stuff i found it horrible really really horrible <laughs> the whole process the garage looks great now it really does but i did not enjoy it at all wow oh wow that is not bad at all is it I like the way you put the table up. But yeah, I mean it won't work permanently, but it's... So this is another find from the garage. And you'll have to let me know if you had one of these. I don't know if it would date you or not, or whether it's something that went on for years. But this is my national record of achievement. This was supposed to be the, do the folder that we handed over to future employers. There's my GCSEs. Well, they haven't put the results in yet. Achievements and experiences. Drawing, painting, silk painting, glass engraving, making clothes, playing guitar, writing stories and poems, member of Tunbridge Performing Arts, ballet dancing, jazz dancing, swimming, former member of Kent County Junior Choir, former member of Girl Guides, grade two piano. I've got grade three piano. That's silly. <laughs> oh, this has a very particular smell you know that sort of plastic document sort of smell in my spare time i often do drawing painting glass engraving silk painting my artwork shows my imagination and my personal feelings <laughs> i design and sew my own clothes so i can be different and more of an individual because those are totally different things <laughs> I especially enjoy experimenting with tie-dyeing clothes and embroidering them. That must have been what I was doing at the time. That is just so bizarre. Not much has changed. I don't play the guitar anymore. I wrote Paris with a small P. Come on, Helen, this is so much a grammar school. <laughs> I have found that I'm very successful at work, which involves imaginative and creative skills. Therefore, I achieve very good grades for my poems and creative stories in English, which I am inspired by from nature around me and my personal experiences. <laughs> I'm also good at expressing my ideas in art. This is my favourite subject as art has no boundaries and I can use my artistic skills to an unlimited extent. <laughs> oh dear, we did talk some bollocks. <laughs> I have bloody 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 blah, blah, blah. Oh, there's this sort of um, really sort of damp, manky uh, film on everything. I think I might have to give this all each page a w wash and individually uh, wash this. Yeah, it was interesting finding that record of achievement thing. I always say, like, as you, of course, as you go through life and you get older, you will discover new things and find other loves and interests. But if you're ever stuck in a rut, I always say, go back to what you did as a child, what you used to enjoy doing, because those things obviously brought you joy with, no, you did those things then 
with no judgment, with no worries, you know, you just painted a picture for the joy of it, or you read a book because you loved getting it lost in a story, or you you danced because you just enjoy the feeling of your of the of your body twirling around the living room you know that sort of thing I always say just go back and do those things that brought you joy when you were younger and and do that again and speaking of memories this week brought some back because on Wednesday we travelled back down to Kent where where we all come from <laughs> and um, it was my auntie Pat's funeral. So we're all feeling a sort of a little bit discombobulated <laughs> because last week we had bank holiday Monday where we did work on the house, Tuesday was a normal day, then Wednesday was that day, was the remembrance service day, which was lovely. I'm so glad that we could go. It was really nice hearing Uncle Paul <laughs> talk about how they met and my cousin Sue had done a lovely display of photos uh, through the ages of Auntie Pat and her family and actually she did this for her 80th birthday which we couldn't go to it was literally two days after we got back from our big Florida holiday so even if we hadn't caught Covid we probably wouldn't have been able to travel all the way back again we just wouldn't have been up to it having travelled for like 24 hours just before we wouldn't have been up to another journey but as we all caught Covid apart from rain actually then we wouldn't have been able to do it anyway which of course now we all regret but uh, it's just the way but yeah she was a wonderful kind woman and she'll be missed I've got lots of fond memories particularly of boxing days we used to we used to swap over each year one year would go to their house the next they'd come to ours and we'd play games and I, I, I have very fond memories of those boxing days <laughs> and also when, our, when um, Rain and Jude were born they sort of became a bonus set of grandparents to them and, um, and we all have lovely memories um, going to Dunorland Park with them, going on the paddle boats and one time they took us to Groombridge Place and that's where Pride and Prejudice was filmed. That was lovely and we saw a Z-donk, which was half a zebra, half a donkey. <laughs> it's a real life thing. And playing croquet and, and yeah. Yeah, if you're a long time viewer actually, you might remember her from a celebration of Auntie Pat and Uncle Paul's 50th wedding anniversary a few years ago. And I watched it back the other day and it was actually one that I was um, obviously making an effort with my videography then. It's a good video. I'm really glad that I, I did it. So it's lovely to have that to look back on. And then lastly, which really does mark, or feels like it marks the end of summer, it was our village show on Saturday. When the kids were younger, we used to participate a little more in that because it was activities you could do through the summer holidays. And then we'd get everything ready and take it down to be judged in the competition. So I think it was originally a flower show because I know there's still people in the village that just call it the flower show, even though even though now the flowers are just a small portion of everything. It's one of your traditional English countryside village shows basically. So you've got the marquees with um, people bringing in their, their vegetables, their flowers and, uh, and then there's a craft and a photography section as well. And then of course there's other stalls like games, skittles and, and things for sale and tombolas and all that lovely stuff. So I forgot to take my camera annoyingly, but I've got a few clips on my phone and, and I'll also show you the things that I entered. Will the circle be unbroken by my... <laughs> you were robbed? We did, yeah. I think that's exactly what I think. I like these because the fat and everything. 
Well, that makes, it makes it worthwhile that you like it. Yeah. <laughs> Jude's just the best in, what is it, best in section? Got a rose up. And very sweet. <laughs> For a bowl of blackberries. So these were my entries for the show. I did get some good wins. I got first prize for the my handmade necklace. So I've got a pyrographed piece of leather, a stick, a wire, and a oak leaf charm with some beads and more beads here and some lace and ribbon. And if anyone's interested in buying this, it is £15 plus postage. I made this to have some smaller items on my stall, but as I'm not really doing stalls anymore, um, I've got some jewellery to sell off. So there we are. Now, <laughs> I have to admit, I was the only person that entered. I thought loads of people would do a necklace. I mean, you can just do anything for a necklace. Um, so I can't really take credit for being first. <laughs> so I think most of these are photography entries. And this one is annoying because the theme was smoke and I had this picture of the candle with the smoke and I thought that was actually quite a nice one. But I lost the entry slip. I mean, considering it is a small village fair, you know, they did take it quite seriously. And if you didn't have the slip stamped paid, even though it's only 25p to enter, um, they wouldn't let you enter it and I ran out of time to go back and get another one so unfortunately that one didn't get entered and this is my watercolour owl it was the 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 entry was for a watercolour of a bird or birds and I got first prize for that um, and admittedly I think that was a bit of luck because there are some excellent artists in the village and they just didn't enter so so I was at a bit of an advantage for that one this one was just called In Bloom, that didn't win anything. This one was a macro photo and that didn't win anything, which I was a bit miffed at because actually <laughs> non-macro photos did place that weren't macro, they were just, yeah, anyway. I'm not gonna moan, I'm not gonna moan. <laughs> and then um, I got a second prize, second place for this one. Um, which the theme was vegetables so I've got a pumpkin patch that I took at Scotty Castle when we visited last September I've got first prize for busy in the kitchen only two entries for this one so again my my uh, chances went up <laughs> second prize for an architectural here we are a detail from a named historic building and that's at Gloucester Cathedral that I took on our trip uh, when we went to the Tewkesbury Medieval Fair and I really liked that one it's quite dramatic and I got third prize for Somerset Wildlife and I have to admit I was a bit that was one of the ones where I thought I could have done I perhaps should have done better the one that came second was just a field of flowers and it wasn't even a particular oh, no I'm not no no shushelen shushelen <laughs> So yeah, that was that one. And I got third prize for straight line. The theme was straight lines. Yeah, it's one of those ones where you're scrolling through your photos and you think, oh, that's a good one for that category. This was of the masts of the Cutty Sark um, in Greenwich in London when we did our London trip last September. So if any of these take your fancy, I think I'll offer them for sale for £12 each. They're on proper photographic paper and I think they'd look nice in a frame and, and up on display so yeah let me know if that's something that you're interested in and let's say £40 for the owl painting if that's something that um, takes your fancy plus postage and I also got joint second I put my cushion cover from the camper van in the cushion cover category and to be honest it should have been a third not joint second <laughs> here we are uh, good use of fabrics but yeah the person that came joint second with me should have come first really by the way i am very conscious that i did this video about um the about reorganizing and changing up the studio and i sort of not followed up on that promise to show you the new changes which haven't happened yet because it's just been a busy summer like i said we've been working outside a lot whilst we can whilst the weather was good and that's taken up all my spare time and energy so i've not been able to do this room very much 
I have made a couple of starts here and there but um, nothing substantial to show you yet but hopefully there'll be that video coming soon and yeah now the weather's changing on a rainy day it's the perfect thing isn't it to tidy up your studio and get things sorted and I'm really looking forward to doing it because again I've got I've had the desk out to do some art and again I've got a little bit frustrated with the lack of space in here so I really do need to create some uh, so that's it for today um, I hope you didn't mind this sort of really bitty sort of catch-up video just letting you know what, what, what's been going on don't forget to send me a message send me an email my email address is below if you are interested in purchasing uh, one of those fo photo prints or the original watercolor or the necklace um, send me a message thank you very much for spending your time with me I really do appreciate it take care and I'll see you again soon bye for now mm -hmm.